Ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you've been following the Four Kinsmen, following our career over the last three years or so, you'll realise that we have spent a good part of that three years just up the road at the beautiful Jupiter's Casino, working in a show called Hollywood Legends. Now, Legends was a... <laughs> Legends was no accident. Uh, Legends was a big success for the producers of the show and for us, for a number of reasons. We like to consider that we were one of them. But also, he said, the, the, whole, the whole show was based, based on, on movies, ladies and gents. Can we take a vote? Um, the whole thing was based on movies. You know, movies from... Oh. Movies from the beginning of the black and white era right up till about, about three years ago. Now, the, there's a couple of things we know about movies. The first is that we all have a favourite one. Whether you're from Australia or America, England, Europe, Asia, it doesn't matter. Everybody has a favourite movie. And there's a very, very good chance that that movie comes to us from Hollywood. I mean, it is one of the great capitals of movie making worldwide. In fact, probably is the greatest capital. The, uh, the other thing we know is that when you go into a theatre and you're having a look up at a screen, what you're actually seeing on the screen is the final product. You don't have to worry about who made the movie or how much it cost, who produced it, who directed it, who did the catering, any of it. It's all taken care of for all of us simply because we decided to go into that particular theatre and have a look at that particular movie. But the music business is different, especially our side of it, because it changes all the time. So naturally enough, we have to change with it if we're going to keep up and do the best show possible. Now we've found the best way of doing this is by far the simplest way, and that is we just talk to people. We simply sit down, and we get a chance to do this a lot because of our travels. We sit down with people and ask them very, very simple questions. Things like, what sort of music do you like to listen to? What sort of music do you sing along with? You know, I mean, generally what entertains you? And as I said, this is the best way of putting our show together. Now when we get overseas, of course, you can find out what the world is listening to if you ask the right questions. So we thought we'd do that last time we were in America, and we started off in Las Vegas. With it. Now, Vegas has got to be the perfect place to start. It's one of the great homes of American show business. At the same time, it's one of the great destinations of other performers, gamblers, tourists. I mean, anybody who is interested in having a good time will at some time in their life get to Las Vegas. We had a look at some of the great production shows of the world. We had a look at some of the great variety artists working in Las Vegas at the time. From there, we moved across the country till we came to the American Midwest. Now look, I don't know whether you know much about the Midwest of America, but it is the most beautiful part of the country, I think. So green and peaceful and quiet. And apart from anything else, it has over the years, basically speaking, become the home of American country music. I mean, some of the greatest country songs written anywhere. You see, this is what happens when the fetus doesn't get enough oxygen. <laughs> now... We wanted to get back there and, and, and catch up with some old friends and do some work, but also we wanted to try and find out if we could, mainly from the older members of the community, if anyone could tell us just when country music started as a genuine style of music in America. Now, quite a few theories were brought to us and they all made a lot of sense, but the one that really stood out was that the whole thing probably started back in the Old West. Now, if you think about this, it's not too silly. If you can imagine all those cowboys sitting out there alone on the prairie, on their horse, rounding up the sheep and the horses and the cattle and whatever. It's only at night they come into the campfire, sit around and tell their stories. They could be theirs, they could be their fathers, their grandfathers, but they are great stories. All you need to do then, put them together with a few chords on a guitar and you have the first genuine American country song. You know, pretty good theory, we thought. Except we heard another one that went back even further than that, to before the white man had even settled in America, when the red man, the Indian, used to ride across the prairie and all he ever had was like a bow and arrow and a horse. Now, if he could get just one buffalo, ladies and gentlemen, he could feed entire family his entire family for the whole winter, and he would probably have, have enough left, but...
That's it. Come here. Come on, come here. It's chemosabi, not chemotherapy. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm having fun. You're not here to have fun, they have fun. You work. Work, fun, fun, work. Get it? Got it. Good. Now, Scott, wait. Move it or lose it? Thank you. We're going to do the ballad. Remember, we rehearsed the ballad yesterday afternoon. Do you remember that? Yeah, at four o'clock. At four o'clock, yes. Yes. Do you remember when you did your part of the ballad? Gee, you were really... <laughs> oh, shit. Uh. Well, we rehearsed it at four o'clock. Anyway, look, I want you to sit down there on that stool and I want you to think about nothing except the ballad. Promise me? Yep. Good. Sit down. Hmm. Use your head. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, the reason I mention all this music sees is that we, we had gone over there to try and find out what the world was listening to. But when we got back to Australia, we were absolutely knocked out to see that at that time, so much of what the world was listening to was coming from right here in Australia. And, gee, that made us feel terrific. Well, that's, that's very patriotic of you. Thank you. Thank very you. Nice. Thank you. This means, of course, that we have to take less of our music from other parts of the world, like America and England and Europe. 